Okay, question 8. We have harmonics. So we want to determine a sequence of transformations which maps the graph of y equals sine of x onto the graph of y equals root 3 sine of x minus 3 cos x and fork. Fully justify your answer. So we're going to be using a compound angle formula. So given that we have this minus here, let's see which one we're going to be using. So we're going to be using sine. Now we can see that to get a minus, we need to have sine of a minus b. So let's start by writing that down. So we're going to have sine of x minus alpha is equal to sine of x cos of alpha minus um, sine of alpha cos of x. Now, we're also pretty likely going to be multiplying uh, the sine function by some number. Now we call that r. So we're going to say that r sine of x minus alpha is equal to r sine x cos of alpha minus r sine of alpha cos of x. So at the moment I'm completely ignoring that 4. That 4 is nice and simple so we'll worry about that at the end. So, if we compare what we have now to what we are mapping to, then we've got uh, root 3 sine of x minus 3 cos of x. Now from that, we can see that the coefficient of sine of x in blue is r cos alpha. So we know then that r cos alpha is equal to um, root 3. And very similarly, we know that r sine of alpha is equal to 3. Now, from that, we can get the values of r and alpha. So, if we square them both, r squared cos squared of alpha is going to be 3 r squared sine squared of alpha is going to be 9. So, r squared uh, cos squared of alpha and r squared sine squared of alpha is equal to 12. Now, r squared times sine squared add cos squared of alpha is equal to 12. Sine squared add cos squared is 1. So r squared is uh, 12. So r is root 12. Uh, which we can simplify to 2 root 3. So we now know the value of r. We can also work out the value of alpha. So to do that, uh, we do r sine of alpha over r cos of alpha. So r sine of alpha over r cos of alpha 
Well, that's just going to give us a town of Alpha. And it's also going to give us uh, 3 over root 3. So that can rationalise to uh, just root 3. Now, if you inverse tan of root 3 and your calculator is in radians, you will get pi pi 3. So, now we know then that 2 uh, 2 root 3 sine of x minus pi over 3 is equal to root 3 sine of x minus 3 cos of x so now we need to worry about that plus 4 this guy here, so that guy is simple, we're just adding a 4 on, so we get t root 3 uh, sine of alpha minus pi over 3 add 4 is equal to root 3 sine of x minus 3 cos of x add 4 so now we know how we've transformed sine of x so sine of x has been transformed to 2 root 3 sine of x minus pi by 3 add 4 ok so let's go through that sequence then so first of all transforming sine of x to sine of x minus pi by 3 but that is a translation now it's going to move as pi by 3 to the right so the vector is pi pi 3 zero okay and then we're going to transform that to two root three sine of x minus pi by three so we are multiplying uh, we're multiplying the function by 2 root 3. So that is a stretch. Uh, along y scale factor 2 root 3. And then finally we're transforming that so 2 root 3 sine of x minus pi by 3 we are transforming that to 2 root 3 sine of x minus pi by 3 and 4 that is a translation
Now we're adding 4 to the function, so that's going to translate us 4 places up. So it's translation by 0, 4. Job done. Okay, part B wants us to show that the least value of 1 over root 3 sine of x minus 3 cos of x and 4 is uh, 2 minus root 3 over 2. So, fractions have the least amount when the bottom is as big as possible. For example, 1 over 10 is much smaller than 1 over 2. So, also, we now know that we can write the denominator as 1 over 2 root 3 sine of x minus pi by 3 add 4. So that will have a least value when 2 root 3 sine of x minus pi by 3 add 4 has its maximum. Now, the maximum value of sine of x minus pi by 3 is 1. So the least value is is going to be 1 over, now when the sine term is just 1, we get 2 root 3 and 4. Now we need to rationalise the denominator. So we multiply by um, 2 root 3 minus 4. So up on top, we get 2 root 3 minus 4. And on the bottom, when you do a difference of two squares, uh, you get the first term squared. So 2 root 3 squared is 2 squared root 3 squared. So 4 times 3, so that's 12. Minus the second term squared, so minus 16. So we have 2 root 3 minus 4 over minus 4, uh, which does indeed give us um, 2, because there's a common factor of 2, so we get 2 minus root 3 over 2. Cool. Okay, then the final part wants us to find the greatest value of the fraction. So that's going to happen when the bottom is uh, as small as possible. So the least value of sine of x minus pi by 3 is minus 1. So the greatest value is 1 over minus 2 root 3 at 4 or 4 minus 2 root 3 now, it's only one mark, so just plonk that in your calculator and you will get 2 add root 3 over 2. Cool.